I want to thank Best Buy for sponsoring this video. What's up everyone, it's Be The Installer. I am here today because it's Black Friday or it's past Black Friday and you guys need a TV, maybe a sound bar and we need to figure it out based on what rooms you're gonna be in because I think that's one of the biggest differentiator. What room are you putting this in? Because buying a TV is not the same if you're putting it in your living room or a bedroom or a game room or a guest room. Very different conditions and I'm sure very different use cases. So I'm gonna go over all these. And the first one that we're gonna start out with is the bedroom because it's very challenging room to pick a TV. A lot of different considerations. Are you really close to the wall that it's gonna be on? Are you far away? Is it really bright in your room? Is it dark? Are you gonna watch it at night or in the daytime? A lot of those factors will play in. And the first TV that I wanna talk about for a possible bedroom TV is the LG B3 series because this is down to $17.99 for a 77 inch model. And it's even less for a 65 inch, I think it's $12.99. And what you're getting with this is a fantastic OLED TV. I think for most people out there, it's plenty of OLED TV. You don't necessarily need to spend two or three times this amount of money to get one that is you know technically a little brighter because if you're gonna be in a bedroom watching TV most likely you don't need it to be blinding bright so why spend extra money to get one that you won't be using that extra brightness and this LG B3 has pretty much all the same features that you'd expect from an LG OLED and it's still way less so I don't necessarily need the most up-to-date processor or I don't really need all the gaming specs or you know, four HDMI 2.1s in my bedroom, those things are not gonna be useful for me. What I really wanna do is stream and be able to watch you know, movies and shows and have good processing and good upscaling, which this will be fantastic for. So you know, this is still really expensive for a bedroom TV, and I think some people would say, whoa, that's too much. But $17.99 for an LG OLED, the B3, I think is one of the best opportunities in Black Friday, period, for most rooms, but definitely a 77 inch in your bedroom, that's a fantastic size TV and deal. And if you're looking at a Samsung, they do have a very similar QD OLED. It actually might be a regular OLED, I'm not sure. You guys can correct me in the comments. I appreciate the comments below, of course. But the S89C is very similar to the S90C, which is both of them are you know, Samsung OLED TVs. I know the S90C is an, is an QD OLED. This one may not be, it may be a traditional OLED, but the point is, is that for $19.99, you're getting a Samsung version of the LG more or less with, you know, a little bit less of the high-end specs, but still a fantastic opportunity for getting an OLED at 77 inch under 2000 bucks. I think this is a great opportunity. And again, here you see the 77 inch S90C is another $500 more. So, you know, in this video, I'm not gonna go over all the feature differences between these two. You might be able to find a video out there, but typically when they model something, an S89C and an S90C, there's not a whole lot different. So for 500 bucks, you're probably okay getting this, especially if it's for a bedroom and you're just gonna be streaming movies or watching a game, maybe some news, those things you don't need the absolute best TV in the world. Now, if you wanted to pair a sound bar for the bedroom with this S89 or S90C Samsung, this Q750C would be a good one. And the reason I say that is because I don't think you need 15 channels of speaker in your room. So if you have a 5.1.2, which is Dolby Atmos, and it works with the TV in order to like triangulate everything and just sound good in general uh, as a pair, I think this is a great opportunity. Normally they work with on-screen menu systems and stuff with Samsung and Samsung. So, you know, for 429, I think you can add that in to one of these TVs here, the Samsung uh, S89 or S90C, and you'll have a better pairing combo than if you were to go all out and buy the top QD OLED, the S95C, which is like $3,500, but I digress. Now, if you're saying that those are both too expensive for a bedroom, I can understand that. Uh, a very popular TV, especially if you don't have a lot of light in the room, is the Sony X90L here. This is $999 for a 65 inch. And the 75 inch is $1499 if you were to get this. So, you know, a little le less expensive from those OLEDs. And I don't know if I'd necessarily prefer this over those OLED TVs, but it's a little less expensive and it is Sony quality, very good TV here. And if you're going with any of the Sony TVs, I definitely recommend getting a Sony soundbar. They are also, very good together. Uh, this HTA 5000 is one that I like. It's 699 down from a thousand bucks for just that. So you can get a, a few different ones. They also have the A7000 for 999, which is even better. And then they have a more basic one here, the HTS 2000, which is more of a compact soundbar, 349. So if you just want a little bit better sound quality than the TV provided itself, you can get any of these soundbars. Now, if you're thinking you were gonna get a Sony OLED for your bedroom, well, then you're gonna have to pay a little bit more money because even their second best Sony OLED right here at 77 is another 
another 700 or you know almost a thousand dollars more than the other two that I showed you uh, you know so that's a little bit more expensive and then the top level a 95 L is like four thousand dollars five thousand dollars still so not necessarily great deals but they're very good TVs so I'm going to talk about those a little bit more later on in the video and then a very popular TV for people in the bedroom because they're trying to mix having art with a quality TV is a Samsung frame. Now I haven't reviewed this one this year. There probably isn't a whole lot different from last year. They seem to really like how it's been coming out the last couple of years, but it is a great art and TV combination. I think it looks the best for art on your wall. So in that respect, it's definitely a winner. As far as its TV quality, it's not up to par with the highest end TV. So you're paying a little bit more to get that ability to have the art on the wall, which can be really good if your you know, spouse doesn't even want a TV in the room. This may be the one to get in order to kind of bridge that gap. So I recommend it. And if you're wanting to pair a good soundbar with the Samsung frame, I actually like the Sonos Arc. I've uh, actually done a few different installations with the Sonos Arc and the Samsung frame. And I just think it looks really cool together, especially the white Samsung frame on the wall. Uh, I've done a couple of those. So a very good mix. Now, if you're saying all these TVs are still too expensive and I really don't need that much and I don't want to pay that much, then I would start looking at things like these Hisense and TCL mid-range QLED TVs. So for example, this Hisense 75 U6K is only $649. So we're far under half the price of those other TVs. And this is actually a pretty good performer. It's a 60 hertz panel. It has some gaming features. It is mini LED. It's going to look good, but obviously so much less expensive. Are you really going to notice a difference if you're just watching a game or an occasional movie in your bedroom? Uh, do you really need to pay $2,000 for an OLED? Or will something like this Hisense U6K work for you? And the same thing goes for TCL. You have some really inexpensive TVs here. And that brings me to guest room TVs as well. Because if you're going to buy an inexpensive TV for your bedroom, I know you're not going to be spending a ton of money to get an OLED TV for your guests. And that's something that I would really recommend is to lower your budget for guest room TVs. TVs because I have a couple that just sit in the room and never get used. And even when I have guests, no one really watches the TV in there. So something like this Q6 would be perfect. A 55 inch Q series QLED from TCL for $349. That is quite a good deal. This is a 60 hertz panel. It is fairly bright for how inexpensive it is. But if you're looking to get a good operating system like the Google TV on something that's going to last and be in this room and you know, you're not going to be angry that you spent a thousand dollars on a TV that never gets used, something like this is perfect. 349, 55 inch. And if you wanted to get larger sizes, they have the 65 inch for 499 and the 75 inch for 649. And there are even less expensive TVs here. We have some Fire TVs from Insignia and other brands. So would you buy a 55 inch Insignia at 229 or would you just opt for getting one of those TCLs. I mean, this Q5 is 229. For me personally, I would probably go with this because this is a QLED TV and these Fire TVs ones are gonna be very basic. Now this one is a 4K UHD, but sometimes these aren't even 4K and they're just 1080p HD TVs. So you gotta be careful when you're buying these really inexpensive ones. Now again, if it's for a guest bedroom, it may not matter. And the Fire TVs are very simple and straightforward to use as a guest. You know, just find all the different programming right on screen. So it's one to think about. And if you want to go with a very inexpensive TV for a guest room that still has some good gaming specs, or maybe even this is where we transition into gaming TVs or your kids' rooms, this UQ75 from LG is a pretty good, well-balanced TV. It's got decent brightness, it has good gaming specs, and the price is right. $299 for a 50-inch. And you can go up in size. They have also have a 55-inch for $349. They have a 65 inch, 449, and I think we've actually even had the 86 inch in here. 75 is 649, and the 86 is 999. So 1,000 bucks for an 86 inch TV. So depending on where you put this, you probably aren't gonna put an 86 inch TV in a guest room or your kid's room. But you know, if you're looking for a budget living room TV, which we're gonna get to in a minute, this would be good at a thousand bucks. But buying a gaming or kid's room TV could be a little tricky because you know, you're talking about getting a 50 inch for 299, or you could go with a 48 inch monitor for a thousand bucks. I mean, that's a huge price difference. So how do you decide where to stop with regards to buying something for a gaming 
TV or a kid's room. I mean, obviously most people are not going to be buying a thousand dollar TV for their kid's room, but this is one, this LG C348 inch is one that would act as a monitor and a TV. So it's a good opportunity, but realistically, do you want an OLED for your kids? Probably leave the TV on all the time and it could end up being a bit of a waste. So that's for you to decide, but there's no doubt that these have great gaming features and that's something that could be good for a game room or your kid's room. And honestly, you have an A2 from last year at the same 48 inch size that's half the price. Now this is a 60 Hertz panel again, so it's not gonna give you the high-end gaming features that you have if you have a PS5 or if you have an Xbox Series X, but it's still a very good option for a monitor. I think a lot of kids wouldn't know the difference. And that leads me into my next point because I actually have the same issue. I have the U8K, a 75 inch, fantastic, and $1,200, and that was in the gaming room. And then for a video I made with LG, I opted to buy the LG G3, the 77 inch, which is much more expensive. It's $3,500. I mean, it's fantastic, I'm not gonna lie awesome. However, my son specifically said that he can't really notice the difference between playing video games on that Hisense 75 and now that he has this LG G3, doesn't really notice a difference, doesn't really seem to care that it's a better TV. So every time I walk by that room, all I see is a $2,000 hole in my wallet. And that's something to consider because this Hisense U8K, it's a fantastic QLED TV, has fantastic gaming features, and it's so much less expensive than something like that LG G3. So if you're considering getting a TV for a gaming room, you know, I don't know, are you gonna really wanna pay over two times as much for something like I did? Uh, something to think about. And again, if you go back to this C3, which is, you know, a very good LG TV, that's $1,000 less or $1,100 less. And if you go all the way back to the B3 I talked about for early, now you're talking about half the price of the G3. So now this is in line with getting that Hisense U8K. And I would imagine that most people would have a pretty hard time picking between this and that Hisense TV. It would come down to whether or not you want an OLED like this or a QLED like this. And you know, it's still less expensive here at $1,299. But you know, some might say, well, wow, if I can get an OLED for only $500 more, I might do it. But that's, that's about a 50-50 toss up. If you end up going all the way to the G3 like I did, you definitely know that you're paying more for you know, a little bit of an improvement, but it's not gonna be as big as you may think, and you might regret it. And again, Samsung also has their high-end TV. This is the S95C, and this is also $3,500. So it's very hard to recommend these TVs, especially this, the S95C, when you have something like the S90C right here, $1,100 less, and I really enjoyed this OLED. I thought it was more or less the same as the S95C. Now this does not have the One Connect box and it is not perfectly flush like the S95C. This does have the lower backside that I've talked about before here, uh, like the traditional you know, C series of LG. Whereas this S95C is really thin here and it does have that One Connect box like I talked about. So those are the differences, but I really think that the S90C is the hot item from Samsung since it's less expensive. You can get a 65 inch version of this for I think around $1,600, that is accurate. So uh, a lot of people would recommend this as far as a high-end TV for a game room or even a kid's room, but it is rather expensive for a kid's room and they may not appreciate that. However, if you wanted to get that with a really good sound system, like let's say your gaming room might be where the kids watch movies as well and you wanna deck it out with a fantastic sound system, this Q990C is a really good system. I actually heard this with those Samsung OLED and this is awesome. It sounds fantastic. So again, rather expensive, but if you're decking out a gaming room or it's a theater room or something like that, um, I definitely would recommend this. You got surround speakers, you got a sub, you got Atmos, really awesome. So definitely recommend that. And now last but not least, we have your living room or your theater room, which can be the most challenging because there's so many different things. You could have a bright room, a dark room. You could be really far away. You could be really close. You might be viewing it from the short side of the room or the long side of the room. So there's a lot of different things. And also, what are you going to watch during the day? Are you watching sports or do you watch movies at night? So all these things come into play. And if you have any issues with this, you can always go take our TV quiz on beTheinstaller.com. It runs you through all of these questions. Questions. So you can figure out, you know, if you have a bright or a dark room, uh, if you're going to be watching different kinds of content, uh, how far you'll be sitting away. And then also if you have any 
brand preferences. And then finally it goes to budget where you can kind of choose, do you want a budget, mid-range or high-end? And once you do all that, it will spit out some options for you. It has the top option and then it has some other ones below. So definitely do that if you have any questions. The link for this quiz and all of these TVs is all down in the description. So let's just start with average distance, maybe six to nine feet or 10 feet away from the TV. Secondly, you have, you know, you can control the brightness in the room. And third, you want a really nice TV. You don't want it to be a budget one, but you want it to be pretty solid. Back to the Samsung S90C. This is probably one of the best TVs for you. It's just got a lot of great features and is a very solid choice. And then also another one that I liked is again, that B3. I feel bad mention it for every room, but it's just such a great opportunity at only $17.99. I think a lot of people would love it and I don't want anyone to miss out thinking they need more features. If you're not playing more than like two different types of high-end video games and you don't, you know, you control the light in your room, this is gonna be plenty bright. And I think either one of those options will be fantastic for an average living room. And don't get me wrong, if you have that same distance and you're looking for those same features, this Hisense U8K would be a great opportunity too. It does come in 75 and I do believe it comes in 85 inch, oh, doesn't say it's available. And it also has a 100 inch version. Neither one of those look like they're available here, but 3000 bucks for a 100 inch, that's very good. Although I have a better deal for you in just a second. But all these are great opportunities. TCL also has a big TV for you. You can get an 85 inch TCL Q7 for only $14.99. I thought that was a pretty good TCL. It is not a mini LED but it's fairly bright. It is, you know, full array local dimming and it has all the gaming specs you'd want. So that's a good one from TCL. And if you wanted to go with the high-end TCL, they have an 85 inch QM8, which is the Q mini LED. Now you're up there at 1999 with an 85 inch QLED. And that, you know, a lot of people might compare that with say the 1799 for a 77 inch OLED. Uh, it may come down to how bright the room is. If the room lighting can be controlled and you want a, more of a dark room scenario, then maybe the 77 inch B3 would be awesome. But if your room is pretty bright all the time and you want something that's even brighter here than this 85 inch QLED at 1999 would be a very good opportunity. And since we're talking about large TVs, let's just go right into that because if you're in a living room and you got a lot of space and you want to fill up that wall, I have a bunch of 85 inch and larger TVs that I can recommend and kind of a hierarchy in what I would like. So one of the ones that I always recommend is the X90 series at this size because Sony typically discounts this more than a lot of other things. There's no, normally not a lot of Sony discounts, but this one is a really good opportunity. $19.99 for an 85 inch. The X90L is a pretty good TV overall even though it's not a mini LED and doesn't have a ton of dimming zones, it still competes with a lot of these other ones like the TCL QM8 that I just showed you and also the Hisense U8K. A lot of people would just rather have a Sony as a more known brand and that's fine. This TV in this size typically flies out the door around the holidays and around big gaming events. So I definitely have to recommend it. If you want something that's less expensive in this size, it can be a little challenging to pick the right one for you guys. I do like this 86 inch UK 75, as I told you before, it is $1,000, so it's half the price. Most people probably wouldn't notice the difference between this and the Sony, other than saying that, you know, they prefer Sony over the LG for its processing abilities and its upscaling. So those if you're, you know, a video file, if you kind of know those differences, then you probably would like the Sony a little better. But overall, I thought that this TV wasn't bad at all for that price at a thousand bucks. Now, if you want something that's brighter than that Sony, this Samsung 85 inch QN 85C has been something that I've recommended before. It's very similar to the top Samsungs. And I think at 2200, 2299 anyways, that this is going to be a very good one for you. It's brighter than the X90L but it does have that Tizen software, so it does depend on if you like Samsungs or not. There's no Dolby Vision on Samsungs, but you know, I, it's just kind of a toss up between this and that X90L. This is a little bit brighter, a little bit more expensive. This has Dolby Vision here and is a little better at upscaling in some of those things. And then don't forget this Q6 here, 899. That's another opportunity. This might even be better than the LG UQ75 that I just showed you. So again, a QLED from TCL and you know, even the Hisense ones are typically competitive at a lower price than the top three brands. So I definitely would recommend some of those. And if we go to the 98 inch, because some people are going to have to choose between a giant TV or maybe even an ultra short throw projector. Now we're talking about the biggest TVs possible. 
And this right here on the top popped up. This TCL 98 inch S5. I have this and I did a review on it. And at the time it was 4,000 bucks, I believe, or I might have gotten it for 3,000 and then it went back up to 4,000 and everyone's like, if it goes back down to 3,000, I'm gonna get it. Well, look, right now it's 24.99 for a 98 inch TV from TCL. I really think that this is a steal for this price. I didn't even know or think that TCL would come out with a 98 inch this year that was this low priced. They did have the QM8, which is still about 6,000 bucks. But to be honest, I like this as much as the QM8. I think this is just fine. It has fantastic highlights. It actually might look as good or better off angle than the QM8 did, which didn't look fantastic off angle. I was kind of disappointed for how expensive that one is, but I have nothing but love for this 98 inch S5. And I think the price of $24.99 is very doable for a lot of sports fans or movie goers. I just really think it's an opportunity. Don't sleep on this. If you can get this TCL 98 inch S5 and you can fit it in your room, it's enormous. So you better have some wall space or a plan if you're gonna buy this. But I definitely think it's an opportunity to get. They only have it in this size right now. So if you wanted to go smaller than the 98 inch, you can go back to that 85 inch Q5 or Q6, Q7, those are good opportunities as well. But I really like this and I think that's pretty much the only 98 inch TV that I would recommend because the price is right. I mean, if you go down to this Q80 C from Samsung, you're talking 5,000. So that's definitely discounted. I haven't seen this and nor do I think it's gonna be that much better than the TCL that I would pay twice as much for it, but it's there. And if you like Samsung, it may be for you. Now they also have this Sony 98 inch, the X90L, but that's still at 8,000 bucks. So, I mean, you can buy three of these TCL S5s for that price. It just really makes it difficult to recommend. I, I can't say that this is, three times better than that other TV. So I like this, it was a good one. I can link the video in the description, but man, 8,000 bucks, 2,500, I mean, that's a no brainer for most people. And here is that QM8 at 98 inch, it's 6,000 bucks. But if you go back up, you can see that this 85 inch QM8 is only 2,000 bucks. So if you're even debating whether or not it's worth it to get a 98 versus an 85, that price difference is something to consider because you know most people would say, Wow, 85 inch for 2,000 bucks is a better deal than a 90 inch for 6,000. But if you compare this 85 inch TCL right here at 1999, or you wanna go 98 inch for 2499, I would say get that 98 inch all day long. And lastly, if you're looking for advice on whether or not you should buy a really big projector or a big TV, this Hisense PX2 Pro is one that I would consider for an ultra short throw. If you already have a screen up and maybe you have a 120 inch screen, $24.99 is the same price as that last TV I just showed you. Uh, and for that size difference to get all the way up to 130 inch is actually awesome. I really would recommend it. If you can control the light in that room, I think you'd be very happy with something like this ultra short throw. And of course, there's a bunch of different ultra short throw projectors on the website itself. Some of them come right here with an actual screen. So you can buy a projector and a screen for 5,000 bucks. So that might be something for some people. I know that's not for everyone. And they might just be thinking a better TV is better. But one that I really liked and I've had in the house is this AWOL Vision LTV 3500 Pro. Now, this is a triple laser ultra short throw projector, as you can see here. 3500 lumen, and this is actually quite nice. I had that paired with 120 inch pop-up projector screen and the 150 inch, and this thing is sharp. It looks really good, and actually I had to send it back to them, and I'm regretting that because I had to put a different projector in its place, and it's not as good, and it's not as bright, and it's not as sharp. So I'm kind of thinking I wanna get this back, and this LTV 3500, along with the 150 inch screen, had me thinking that I would never go back to a 98 inch TV because it's so much bigger. However, if I was to go from this 3500 back to a regular TV, it would definitely be this TCL 98 inch S5. It just had bright highlights. It had no dimming zones or blooming issues. And I thought it was really cool for the size and the price. So it's either one of these two, either in my living room, it's gonna be this 98 inch S5, or it's gonna be this AWOL Vision triple laser projector. One of those two. So let me know what you guys think about that. Which one should I stick with? And again, if you're more confused now than you were at the beginning of the video, I really recommend that you go to the TV quiz on our website, which is in the link in the description, because it just makes it easier. You can just put in all your specific scenarios and it'll pop up different TVs for you. And you can take the quiz over and over until you find the TV that's right for you. Remember around the holidays, a lot of these TVs will go out of stock. So click on those links. Get yourself a TV now, sooner than later. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'm happy to answer those and give my best advice. And I will see you guys in the next video.